Well, good morning, all. It is Wednesday, May 27th. Today, I'm coming to you from our basement of our main church auditorium. This is the room where I generally have the privilege of teaching the Builders for Christ Sunday School class. It's been a couple months now since we have met together, and we're looking forward to, within the next month or so, being able to be back together uh, for our Sunday School and hopefully within the next three or four weeks, things will be back to their normal routines and situations is our prayer and our desire. Um, but being uh, Wednesday, May 27th, we have to say happy birthday to Jaden Woodworth, whose birthday is tomorrow on Thursday the 28th. So happy birthday, Jaden, and also congratulations on your receiving your associate's degree from Ivy Tech and being named student of the year at Ivy Tech. Uh, so a great job, a great testimony for the Lord. And so happy birthday to Jaden tomorrow. Uh, I want to remind you that uh, next Sunday we will be doing the same format that we have been doing now for almost a month. We'll have the two services, the nine o'clock service and the 11 o'clock service. And um, we look forward to seeing many of you there. We also will be live streaming the 9 o'clock uh, service. Uh, also next Sunday, let me remind you, is the fifth uh, Sunday of the month. And every time we have the fifth Sunday of the month, the offering that we take up goes to oftentimes a special project. And this uh, coming Sunday, the offering that we take up will go towards the teens and the young people as they make plans to go to the wilds in July. So the fifth Sunday offering uh, this Sunday will go to the teenagers, the young people who are heading off to the wilds, hopefully in July. So keep that in mind as well. Again, uh, next Monday will be June Pierce's 94th birthday. And I trust that you have already sent her a card. But if you haven't, please send her a card and wish her a happy birthday. Um, she now lives in Florida, but still a very important part of our church family. And her address is 17 Nori Court, N-O-R-I-E Court, in Fort Myers, Florida, 33912. So don't forget about June and her 94th birthday um, this coming Monday. So please send her a card. If you're not familiar with who June is, just tell her you're one of the families from Fayetteville Baptist and you wanted to wish her a happy birthday as well. All right. Well, being Wednesday, we want to also continue to remember our missionaries and the um, what they're going through as well. We received a uh, email from Russ Turner, who is serving in um, primarily in Costa Rica, but he has been going out to reach in the remote jungles of Latin America, including Nicaragua, Colombia, uh, and and those areas in there, and. Um, so he writes us and he tells us that, uh, will you please teach a virtual class on Revelation like you did at a church a year ago? This was the plea of a young man who grew up in our church in San Ramon. As a result of this and request from others, Russ began an in-depth study of the book of Revelation. What, what an explosion of ministry opportunity God is giving us. We are reaching into 14 different countries with these Facebooks virtual studies and Russ is sending a hard copy of the notes to all that ask for them. God is providing opportunities to minister to neighbors and people with whom we interact on a daily basis while doing necessary errands. We give out Gospel of John's, The Messenger, which is our audio Bible, Jesus Film on DVD, and Evangelistic Tracks. Costa Rica began restriction in mid-March and people responded responsibly. We have a stay-at-home order, curfew at night, and on the weekends, churches and public places closed, etc. Extended fines are issued to those who disobey the curfew and vehicle restrictions. Costa Rica border is closed until June 15th, unless that is a later date. However, on the bright side, we have sunshine, rain, and plenty of fresh vegetables and fruit within walking distance of our home. Every ministry is adjusting to new methods of serving people during this time. Missions is no exception. 
Our last trip to the Amazon region was in January. We had a trip planned to several jungle villages in different countries, but had to postpone them due to border crossings and closing in all the countries in which we minister. But God is still at work. Using Western Union, we have sent several thousand dollars to help build five churches and build two small motors for canoes. This has been a great encouragement to the believers in each village. Even though we can't go right now due to restrictions, we still help minister to them, plus the virtual study for those who have internet access via cell phone or computer are helping the pastors to further their Bible knowledge and understanding. Thank you for allowing us to be your outreach to Latin America. We are uplifted and encouraged by the gifts from special partners during this uncertain time. And this comes from Russ and Lynn Turner. And so continue to remember them and their ministry. Obviously, they are restricted on what they can do. But as all of our missionaries and as we have done, we find various ways to get the word out. So continue to pray for Russ and Lynn as well as all of our other missionaries. Uh, wherever they might be stationed at this time. Well, we continue our study of Psalms 119. And this morning, we are looking at verse, uh, beginning at verse 137. 137. And here it shows us how the Spirit of God plants within us, through His Word, the faith that we need to trust what God is doing. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And so what we see here, beginning in 137 down to 144 of Psalms 119, is how God's word is trustworthy no matter what. So we're calling this section that God's word is a path to hopefulness, to hopefulness that we can trust, that we can have faith in what God says no matter what. And we'll divide this up into three or four sections here. First of all, we see that God's word is trustworthy no matter what people do. And we read in verse 137 to 139, it says, Righteousness, Righteous art thou, O Lord, and upright are thy judgment. Thou hast commanded thy testimonies in righteousness and exceedingly faithfulness. My zeal has consumed me because my adversaries have forgotten thy word. And no matter what everybody else does, God's word is trustworthy. It is based upon righteousness. It directs us towards righteousness. It keeps us righteous before God as we're obedient to what God's word has to say. God's word is trustworthy no matter what people do. God's word is trustworthy no matter what people say. For we read in Psalms 119, 141, excuse me, 140 and 141, Thy word is very pure, therefore thy servant loves it. I am small and despised, yet I do not forget thy precepts. So though he was tested through persecution and criticism, he still knew that God's word was trustworthy. And that is what gave him the hope to carry on. And so God's word is trustworthy no matter what people do, no matter what people say. God's word is trustworthy regardless of how I feel. Psalms 1, uh, 19, 142 says, Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is truth. Trouble and anguish have come upon me, yet thy commandments are my delight. Even though I might be feeling anguish and troubles, I know that God's word is true, and so therefore that is my, my delight. And therefore, I have this hope in trusting God's word. And then lastly, God's word is trustworthy no matter how long I live. And it says in 144, thy testimonies are righteous forever. Give me understanding that I may live. So no matter what, no matter how old we are, no matter where we are in life, God's word is trustworthy. And so therefore, because God's word is trustworthy no matter what people do, God's word is trustworthy no matter what people say, God's word is trustworthy regardless of how I feel, and God's word is trustworthy no matter how long I live. We realize that God's word is the path to our hopefulness. 
It can be trusted. And I trust that you value the Word of God in your life because you have saturated your mind with it. You have determined in your heart to be obedient to it and you live it out in your everyday life. Well, we'll see you again on Friday and uh, have a pencil and paper ready. We'll give you the birthdays for the next week. Until then, may the Lord bless you and, uh, and keep you. And we look forward to seeing you on Friday. God bless.